Well, hey, Jordan, good to have you back once again on the Active Towns channel. Welcome. Hey, John, it's good to be back. So, Jordan, we're going to be uh, treating uh, the the audience to Leiden. And this was November 8th. This was your final day in the Netherlands. That's right. Uh, and uh, it's it, it's a fun one. So let's, uh, let's kick this off and have some observations. Now, earlier in the day, on this day, we were actually in Harlem. And so we had met up with uh, Joel Crawford, and then we did a ride around Harlem. And then that was one of the very first uh, reaction videos that we produced uh, back in late uh, 20, 2022, last year, late last year. And then, uh, so, but we're, we're wrapping this up. This was your final day. So let's, uh, let's kind of hit the play button on this and uh, talk a little bit about what this experience was for you uh, in Leiden, because uh, it was a little different when we first got off uh, the train and, you know, especially from Harlem. Yeah, it, and it's also been a long enough now that I'm probably going to see things that I haven't thought about in a long time. But oh, for sure. I love <laughs> going through Leiden. It was such a treat. Um, yeah. It was cool to see how they relate to their uh waterfront like slightly differently than some of the other dutch cities do and yeah. i like i can't recommend highly enough that people stop in Leiden if they ever come close to it yeah yeah i paused here just for a second because i start uh carrying on a conversation with myself about this little stretch because i thought it was really weird this and fun an impressive little uh la of potted trees <laughs> yeah. Kind of an interesting entrance. It looks like this is the part of the university campus. Yeah, very, very surprising. I didn't expect this. So far, very modern. Yeah. And I don't know if you could hear it yourself there, but uh, y you had made the comment, oh, there's a big parking garage. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right there on the left. Yeah, it was like this whole parking garage, you know, complex and obviously probably serving the, the university that's right there. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll press play again. And uh, I, I make a comment about uh, this and then we'll, we'll, we'll chat a little about about what's what's up here. It was really a, just a pleasant environment, though. And after long last, we found what we were searching for. Parking. A sea of parking. <laughs> I'm such a ham. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean... Well, if we, they don't we have were... that, how's anybody going to get there? Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, how can, how can any of the businesses survive and how can students get to school? Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I, I, initial thoughts, uh, you know, getting off the, the, the train there, I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep, yet another place where you can just pop into the middle of it uh, and uh, get around on bike pretty comfortably. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, it's like there's a theme developing here on these. Yeah, videos. There's, a, there, God, there's a theme. You know, <laughs> you can get anywhere by bike. Imagine that. Uh, and I was really, really impressed just with the the number of 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 people. I mean, just going going this way, going that way on bikes. And as we'll see in just a moment here, there's still plenty of cars in Leiden. Mm hmm. We transitioned over to, you know, off of the that little paver sort of path onto a uh, black asphalt uh, sort of pathway here. It looks like it may be a, a little bit older. But you see the, the where there's conflict with the, the, the motor vehicles here. Uh, they do make sure that they have that red treatment there to indicate right. so that motor vehicle drivers know. Yeah, and this is a rather nice roundabout here. Beautiful Dutch design. Mm. 
And because I love roundabouts so much, I'm going to check the whole dang thing out. Oh, look at this. It's oh, not yeah, even a this full one roundabout. Really interesting. It's a peanut. Yeah, so we get to this point on it, and we're like, okay, it's not really even a roundabout, but I was bound right. and determined to check this thing out. So see what I end up doing. Huh, very interesting. Oh, skirt, skirting the law. And what she did was she came right through that street there. Okay. So we were so enthralled by this particular roundabout intersection and, and, and obviously we had seen many roundabouts over the, the previous two weeks and uh, had the opportunity to talk roundabouts with Georges there in, uh, in Nijmegen and, uh, you know, Mark Bicycle Dutch uh, there in uh, Den Bosch, as well as Leonard Nout in Utrecht. And so, you know, by this time we had had our full of roundabouts, but then this one came up and it's not a complete roundabout for us, but it is a roundabout for motor vehicle drivers. And uh, we, we just sat back and watched this for some time. Uh, I'll, I'll turn our volume down a little bit and let you sort of uh, riff on, on this as it plays. And I think you'll, you'll, it'll bring back some memories for you. And you can just see, you know, the, all the motor vehicle drivers are you know, treating the space, you know, quite respectfully and letting people through. And again, two way roundabout situation, not ideal, but you can see how it works, especially when you've got portions of the cycle path that are bi-directional. We'll see how the motor vehicles kind of queue up. Motor vehicle drivers definitely have a little bit more extra work. They have to scan over both shoulders because they have two-way bike traffic. But you can see how the buses navigate through. Nice little, there's a bigger bus over in this area. You can kind of see. And again, this is not a complete roundabout for the bikes because there is a cycle street, a cycle priority street on the other side, directly across where that blue car is coming around. Yeah. All right, Jordan, what do you think? That's an interesting one. A little bit of a, yeah, it is interesting. It was, I was surprised. I thought it was gonna be a traditional roundabout and, uh, and we got to the other side and there was like, oh, where do we go? And then we saw a gal on the, the, the basically the edge lane road on the other side there, uh, one of the shared street bike, bicycle street areas. Yeah. She just shot across the intersection and got into the cycle path over here. Yeah, I wonder how much of that goes on. I was thinking this is a, a little bit of a um, tight turn right here, turning right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you um, can see you can see this this rider has to cut across through there. That's a really really tight, tight a tight turn. You can see how these two are going to navigate that. And again, the the thing that is most you know challenging about all of these, and I think to uh, George's point la yesterday, is that. Uh, Every single roundabout is a little different. Yeah. <laughs> Every single roundabout that we have seen pretty much has had some little niggle that's been a little different. And every, it's like every corner of this one is different than the other one. Yeah, yeah. One way over there. Yeah. Coming in a two way. Yep. So bring back some memories. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could see it from above. You know, like we did oh, in uh, Nijmegen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> because it's is... a little tough to wrap your head around from like any one spot. It's almost like you got to ride around it a couple times. Yeah. It's almost like this spot was functioning. It's like 
this was like a cross, not a crosswalk, but a crosswalk with bike crossing uh, added on at, to a full car roundabout. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I guess your peanut comment was the way to go. And it's not really even truly a, a, a traditional peanut when you think of, of what a, a no. peanut roundabout looks like, because, you know, on the, the far side there, uh, you know, where that one gal just cut across, you know, from the, the bicycle street uh, or the neighborhood street, um, you know, and then connected with the cycle path. And then we, of course, you know, did the same direction. We just went over to where the, the crosswalk was and then and shot across. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, what's really interesting though, too, and I, and I mentioned this in the, in the commentary in just a moment, is that it works simply because the scale is right and the motor vehicle traffic is traveling right. slow enough that uh, ev- everybody, everything kind of gets along. And even though the dimensions aren't perfect and ideal, since everybody is slowing down, uh, that's the magic of it. You can, you can yeah. actually navigate it and you can do so successfully. Yeah, you're right. Everybody involved, especially the drivers, have to do enough kind of zigzagging. And, uh, you know, they also have that spot where the, the truck's about to come and they have space to, to sit there and wait while both, while the, you know, while the bikes cross and not get in the way of the traffic behind them, which I feel like we point out every time we talk about Dutch roundabouts, but like, we do. it's just, but, I mean, but that's a critical one of the keys factor. to making it work. Yeah. I mean, the two, the two things that, that are keys to making it work are a, <laughs> get the, get the angle right, get the dimensions right. So you slow the motor vehicle traffic down and B, you know, have that little waiting area there where at least one vehicle can be queued up and, uh, you know, yield to bikes and peds and, and yet not impede the, the, the traffic, uh, in the rest of the roundabout. So, yeah, I think it's always on my mind because like, you know, in Texas and North America, most things are traffic lights. And if you're going to turn right, uh, especially if you're turning right on a red, um, which is legal in most places, uh, to do so, you gotta, you have to creep into, uh, the, you know, the pedestrian crossing zone, which sucks, but you have to do it if you're in, if you're intending to turn right. Um, and this is intending to eliminate that or, or making that conflict, uh, a lot less likely. Um, so, so at least you have the place to sit out, find when it's safe to cross and not do so blocking the pedestrian and bike traffic. And, and the angles are correct. And, you know, And to the point, yeah, we probably just need to outlaw right turn on reds, period. (laughs) Yeah, well, we need to be clear about what we're, we need to be clear about what, what um, actions we're designing for, because we're designing for, uh, you know, exchange at intersections, but we also seem to want to design for speed. So, yeah, it's, those two are incompatible. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, but it's uh, a fascinating one. I mean, you can see just how busy this uh, roundabout intersection is, both from a motor vehicle perspective and from a, um, a, a a bicycle perspective. You can see that there's just a lot of activity, but because of the design, because everybody is going at relatively slow speeds, including the buses, um, everybody gets along. Everybody's able to get through safely. You've got that still the long stopping distance to where even if a car's coming, they can pretty much fit right there if they've got to stop. Correct, yeah. You You can see right here, yep. So the Suzuki, the gray Suzuki is able to pause, come to a complete stop if necessary, and uh, still not block the movement in the interior of the, uh, the roundabout. There you go. You even even have even have a mono wheel. I didn't I didn't catch this before, but on the other yeah. side, there's actually part of this is a driveway. Oh yeah, you're right. There's a it's a driveway. There's, a lot going on. there's two driveways actually. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There is a lot going on. Fascinating. Okay, let's move on. 
so anyways, uh, yeah, I, 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 I was delighted to go back and watch that footage and go through that. And, uh, you know, just as soon as we, you know, we sort of paused and we were reflecting and then hit, hit the plague again and it got even more intense <laughs> <laughs> to uh-huh. to the to our point of of saying that yeah it's at least because all the motor vehicle uh, drivers are are going at really really slow speeds and the dimensions are actually forcing the the bicycle riders to slow down as well uh, everybody is is able to navigate it you know in relative safety which I think is really important so yeah good stuff any final thoughts on uh, on that intersection before we hit play again. No, uh, well, other than the, the the kind of same point that we return to it a lot, which is like in places like that, that could have been a big expanse of asphalt and a few traffic lights in, you know, different directions. And then you're kind of left to figure it out. And then it's very long to cross on foot or you could orchestrate it a lot more tightly like is done here. Uh it's to make everybody feel like their space, it's clear what where their space is and how their movement's supposed to progress. Uh, and I just think that's, a, this is a great demonstration of a complex intersection done like with extreme thought and care and attention to detail here, there, as compared to a lot of the ones that I see in my uh, neighborhood, which is yeah. kind of like, I don't know, you guys figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I like about this one, too, is that relatively speaking, uh, compared to a North American style roundabout uh, that is designed for speed, is that this doesn't take any anywhere amount of space. The you know, the amount of space that uh, a traditional North American and turbo roundabout tends to take is just like, yeah, no, we can squeeze this in. Yeah, we we had a a roundabout installed and the edge of my neighborhood, which t- seemed to take five years to get from start to finish. And last week we had a car crash into a house that was right off the roundabout. Uh, and which is just like, if that's not an indication that you're designing it for like for speed where it needs to be designed for safe exchange. Like, yeah. 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 Crazy. All right. Let's head down the road. So, and that's exactly what we did. We head on down through the cycle path here and and continue on. Um, And we're starting to see too, that the the architecture is changing and, 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 you know, sort of morphing from that modern look that we had by the university and by the the main train station that we got off at. And now we're, uh, uh, you know, sort of motoring down here and, uh, I love this little stretch here too, because it, it, again, you've got plenty of car presence, but you also have the, the, you know, cars parked. So you have a parking protected two way cycle track here. Hmm. And again, lots, if you look at the, the numbers, you can really see that, you know, the, the number of people riding bikes is far outnumbering yep. the number of motor vehicles. And it stands out to me how wide this right of way is, which Mm -hmm. uh is kind of resonates with so many of our right-of-ways in the u.s right um and look how much they do with that space yeah yeah and to you know a lot of car capacity oh yeah Yeah. a lot of car capacity still but and also to to leonard's point if you're talking about moving people um you know having a a really generous two-way cycle track uh, on one side or on both sides of the road you can move tens of thousands of more people than you can in motor vehicles. And we see some major construction going on in this particular stretch here. And uh, um, I don't know if you, if this is familiar to you, but uh, uh, we, we turn the corner here and we get a, a rather delightful surprise. Is that Bernie Sanders? Yeah, that's Bernie Sanders right there. Hey, there it is. The the Netherlands that everybody is assuming they're going to see. That's right. When they go yeah. to the Netherlands. Yeah, there we go. And here is the Leiden windmill. 
It is actually working. It's milling that wind. Spinning anyways. <laughs> Not sure if it's actually doing any real work. This was so pleasant. Yeah, no, this, at this part, you know, we were, we had just been in that section there where we were on a, a beautiful, comfortable, wide cycle track, but we were right next to really, really busy uh, roadway. And then again, we turn the corner, we get the windmill, then we get into this little stretch here. And you can just see the number of bikes, you know, parked, you know, all through this stretch here. And we're just on a shared road situation and uh, we'll go up over this um, interesting treatment that we have on this bridge um but yeah you can totally tell we're we're in oh, a yeah. completely different city here yeah what's the deal with that bridge yeah it was that was wild huh yeah oh I, it was putting cars in single file to to avoid any any two two cars passing each other on there, even if yeah. no bike traffic is around. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think was happening. But yeah, here's that orientation to the water that we had heard about. And oh we yeah, had, had not yet experienced until we turned around and turned that corner and got to this spot. And some boats, a restaurant set up right on the water. some more ships over here and then we get into this uh you know kind of real historic uh core area and uh, you and i had heard from um i think it was melissa bruntlett that had talked about how uh, the water orientation to the water and it's very frequent to to be able to do uh canal tours and boat tours uh, but yeah. on November 8th, when we were there, we didn't see any activity in the water in, in any of the canals. Uh, the most activity we saw was that section right there where, where the boats were. Yeah. But again, this is, uh, again, now we're in the more historic core. Now we've transitioned over to uh, this environment that we're super, super comfortable with at this point, which is the, uh, the red brick treatment shared roads and uh and and your favorite the the parking of the cars right next to the canal man that would just give me so much anxiety <laughs> <laughs> that's reason enough not to have a car oh yeah <laughs> the anxiety of uh, of it going into the drink <laughs> that is reason enough to really pay attention on the the parallel parking portion of your driver's education <laughs> yeah yeah for sure well, and if you look on the other side of the canal, that's back-end parking there. Uh, the same thing. If you're not real good at backing up, you can drop it right in oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but again, we were um, at this stage of the game. We're uh, going into, I think it's it's afternoon, mid-afternoon. Uh, we're starting to get hungry and thirsty. And so we're already sort of talking about the fact that, okay, let's Let's kind of ride around a little bit, get get a sense as to what the city is like, but then let's keep an eye out for a place uh, to to get a bite to eat and, and get a beverage before our long bike ride uh, back to Delft. That's exactly what we're doing. So I'll, that's really yeah, all we're doing we're, here is we're just I think kind we were of in search around. of uh, alcohol and fried food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, well, I don't know what else you can say about these streets i love this little section right here because you see right there uh in the street you've got the bricks uh, st uh, spelling out school and that was one of the treatments that i just absolutely loved about the netherlands especially on these brick streets is that's not paint that you see there those are mm -hmm. actually white uh bricks that they're able to to spell things out and uh, call attention to crossing areas and all of that so i just i love that treatment of being able to use uh, you know, the actual bricks uh, to, to be able to, you know, alert everybody that, oh, by the way, you're in a school zone, which I believe this is a school. So anyways, that was my uh, 
My little my little uh, commentary on that little segment there, because that was just one of the things, one of the treatments that I just love about uh, uh, the Netherlands. Yeah, I, I love that too. The the attention to detail on the on the materials and surfacing. Yeah. Oof. Speaking of surfacing, I hear your bike. Cobblestone alley, <laughs> cobblestone road. Bollard Central over here. Yeah. And really, you could tell that we were in uh, the the true historic core there. And uh, we actually, I start angling over here to the left, get onto the bricks. There's a little bit yep. smoother surface because, uh, yeah, those those cobbles were beating us up. Yeah, it's like we were back in Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. And and we've talked about this uh, before. One of the reasons why that is such a, a, an effective treatment is for the motor vehicle drivers. They feel that vibration and it really encourages them to, to, to drive slowly. And we're here at this historic church area here. Um, and so, yes, it's a bit punishing for uh, people who are on bikes. Um, but the main reason of, of retaining that, right. you know, that like treatment church. is for that reason is to, to really slow the motor vehicle drivers down in this, you know, historic area here. And I feel it. I feel it. We're getting close to food. <laughs> I love how the scale of these streets and closeness of the buildings really lets you have a, an outdoor room. Yeah. Uh, the, it defines the, that outdoor room that's pretty easy to create yeah, that scale. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right. A while. So what do you think, Jordan? You just rode on some real European cobblestones. What do you think? Uh, amazing area. Probably best experienced on foot. <laughs> <laughs> Those were amazing. Yeah. The streets back there. They really were. I, I tried to keep my pace up so that you're actually kind of like flying from, from <laughs> cobble to cobble to cobble. <laughs> I so, tried to keep my pace down. Yeah, you, you, you took the slow uh, method and I took the fast method, so I'm not sure who uh, came out the better. I know my bike is all beat up. Yeah, my teeth are so. rattling. <laughs> I love that. My teeth are rattling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we, we had a quick bite to eat and, uh, and thanks to, um, the, the marvels of technology, um, I, I think we, we actually do have, uh, proof that we, uh, we, we got some food and we got some, uh, uh, some, some beverages here. Let's fix your camera here. But yeah, no, that was, that was really special. So we, we, we paused, uh, took, took some time out to, to, to grab some, I think these were, uh, sweet potatoes, right? Sweet potato fries. Yeah. Yeah, sweet potato fries and, and a beverage and uh, and just relaxed a little bit. And um, I, I don't know about you, but I was like, yes, we needed this. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was it was really special to be able to pause and do that. And um, the other neat thing about this was across this the canal here, um, I think we determined this was also part of a, a network of schools or a school building itself. And so there was just this constant flow of students heading in, in and out of yep. this particular area. And as I recall, we were also sharing, you know, some of the, the tables around us were actually occupied by uh, teens of, of various age groups. And uh, it was just a really, really neat experience, you know, hanging out there. Yeah, it was very, very scary. Teens are, Teens a are very scary. scary demographic, but we we stuck together. I mean, you have to do everything you can. Cities, if you're if you're tuning into this, you have to do everything you can to keep teens from loitering around yeah. your establishments. You wouldn't want them to actually uh, sit down and and uh, buy some food and beverages. Yeah, it's yeah. You want to kind of force them into the woods <laughs> where they can make fires and smoke. Uh, exactly. But then you're going to want to get them in trouble for doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was great. But, you know, it was time. It was time for us to continue on and start our ride. 
Uh, and, and that's exactly what we did. We took off and back down there, right past that school, school area again. School area, and you, as you can tell, the, uh, <laughs> the kids kind of take kids kind of take over the street it's a uh, it's a kid calm street kid calm street that's great i like that yeah isn't that great <laughs> this is just such a different scene than the school by my house letting out yeah. it's just in any direction a, a blocks full of of idling cars yeah those kids thought the streets were for people and that car driver had other thoughts yeah I was gonna say it was a kid calm street. Yeah, yeah, until the driver had enough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then off we go. We're, uh, we, we're, now we're sort of in this, in this whole lineup of, of parents and kids uh, riding in this little stretch here. And um, we start making our way uh, out of the actually city, city center and it won't take us long. What happens when the children take over the streets? <laughs> chaos. The chaos. This is what kids. happens. <laughs> you can't get anywhere. Like we were saying earlier, the chaos of kids in your city. Leave the uh, anarchy street design to the children. They'll take they over. I think I said they should. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right. Kind of think the sometimes they should take over. <laughs> It's a it's a theme that uh, that I've talked about uh, several times with various um, authors uh, on the podcast is that yeah I mean there is a bit of wisdom for turning over street design and city design to children they have a unique perspective on it especially the younger ones I mean they see it see the the, the landscape at a different height um, and you know getting them engaged with with you know feedback as well as ideas. Uh, there's there's some real value to that, I think. Yeah, yeah. We don't take kids seriously in so many ways. Like, I, it, we should totally be asking like about the experience of life on the street as a kid. Yeah, no question. And not just streets, like design. So many design things. Yeah, exactly. So many designs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That user interface. You know, what's what's it like? You know. Yeah, you seeing this other users yeah. and all. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you trying to tell me that kids are people too? <laughs> I'm I'm working my way there. You're working yeah. your way there. I'm starting to think so. Yeah. Yeah. And again, just you know, real real delightful. We're we're obviously going through a, a little bit of this uh, neighborhood here. We get to back onto a cycle track, and then onto an edge lane squeezed a little bit between the traffic and the parked cars but yep yep and we do start to notice immediately from this point on we're in a different kind of vibe different kind of feeling environment Now we're sort of transitioning into a little bit more of an industrial part of the, the city. Mm. And you can really tell the, the, you know, the treatments are a lot different. Not a lot of U.S. car dealers that do, and you would probably walk to. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear what you said there? You said not a lot of U.S. car dealerships where you would actually walk to the dealership. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But I thought I thought that we had that coming up, but there was a couple yeah. of car dealerships we went by. Yeah. And, and again, we're at a major, major road here. Now we're actually on a, a, a much more uh, advanced uh, cycle track system, and we're going to be able to start you know, going under uh, these major roadways, which we're used to. Uh, so you can really tell that this is a little bit more of the suburban context in the industrial complex. But... The point being is that we end up seeing uh, this network of, 
you know, separated cycle paths that, that have been established. Yeah, this this right here is something I would like to see a lot more of is the grade separated crossings. If, if we insist on having these big roads that are harrowing to cross on bike and foot. <clears throat> I think this is our, our, uh, our canal. So I basically was saying, this is our canal. This is the canal we'll be following uh, back to Delft for most of the way. But yeah, to your point, uh, you know, Boulder does a really good job of doing that, where they have this entire network of off-street separated cycle paths and multi-use paths uh, that then are able to navigate under or over those major yep. uh, roadways that exist in the city. Uh, almost, you know almost too much they rely upon that almost too much because now uh they're a little bit behind on transforming the street space and so it, yeah. i think it's important to do both oh so. yeah i totally i totally agree about that i i think it's like a compromise where they're unwilling to to make any um to be flexible with how they think about that public space that right of way and yeah. ultimately i don't know if it's Right. I think ultimately it may delay progress of, right. of transforming that space. But yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. But if you haven't, if you haven't, folks, if you haven't seen my, my video on Boulder profiling that, be sure to check that out. Uh, we do talk about that. And we talk about that challenge of now trying to shift and being able to transform some of the on-street network. Mm -hmm. So I'll make sure to include that link in the, in the show notes as well. I'm only half joking. It's we're on this for two miles. Okay. Two, miles. two kilometers, two We're miles. Already at the smells of the countryside. Already at the smells of the countryside. Yes. Would you like to find your small country cottage? Yes. Yes, please. And literally, you know, five minutes from that old historic core where we were at. Silence. Yeah. All right, Jordan. So one of the reasons I love taking these, uh, these uh, back roads, these country roads is just this, you know, the, the sheep, the yep. goats, the chickens. <laughs> yeah, there they are. You've got it all. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> it's so comfortable too. Yeah, it's just these these pathways are just so incredibly comfortable. Yeah. And what did it take us five minutes to get out of like the central part of Leiden? Of Leiden. <laughs> to get here. Yeah, and here we are. Breathing the manure fumes and waving at sheep. Oh, it's, it's the uh, it's just the the wonderful canal side smells of nature it's good and stuff they do such a great job of like way wayfinding out here too yeah yeah Abs absolutely all right so jordan how was your trip this is great i'm thinking so, about uh sabotaging my way home and just yeah staying here staying here yeah <laughs> It's, it's tempting, right? Yeah. It really is tempting. It's so, it's just, obviously every place has its own problems, but like, yeah. it's easy to find your way around here. Felt like you could get anywhere on bike, any, almost anywhere you wanted to go on a train. Um, I don't know, just obviously a human scale country Yeah. of human scale towns and cities and and a lot of love put into the experience of many of the streets yeah. that you walk down. Including quiet country roads Including like we're on now. Including quiet country roads, right. Yeah. Right, which are, you know, also these all ages and abilities places sort of in, in a ways that you might not have expected before yeah. coming here. Yeah. We were fighting the wind on that, so we uh, we gave up <laughs> trying to do the on-bike interview because the wind was really gusting. 
Uh, and, and this was just so, so peaceful and beautiful. So we had to do this a little bit more until we found a place to do an actual formal interview, which, which is coming up in just a moment. Oh, I hope um, you edited it down. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's it, I yeah uh, for for, for, the, for the for the viewers of this yeah it, it was at least an hour and a half long interview so we, it's been cut down quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, with pearls of wisdom, really at every turn. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, reflecting on uh, what this is, this is essentially. I called it a path, but in reality, this is just a shared road. This is a shared space. So motor vehicles and, oh. and motorcycles and scooters and people walking and people biking and, you know, people getting to their farms, their, their, their homes all along this stretch. Again, it's hard to really describe just how pleasant and comfortable it is riding long distance city to city oh, the chickens are all huddled up out of the wind yeah quite the little uh enclave over here right along the canal And that was one of the interesting things too about uh, you know this this whole section here is I don't I, I got lost I wasn't sure exactly where we were uh, on this journey trying to get from from Leiden to um, uh, to, to Delft uh, so I'm not sure what that enclave actually is what city that is municipality but it was really neat to see you know we've got farms on one, on the left of us and then on the right we've got you know the the canal and then on the yeah. other side of the canal yeah, the banks here. of the canal there was this whole community <laughs> and and really you know quite new looking buildings with uh some multi-family so it's just it was really surprising to to see that and experience it and really quite delightful too and then we we jogged away from the um uh, the canal uh, for a little bit here and then we get to uh, a spot here where we decided to set up we're actually in the lee uh, side of, of a tree um, as a windbreak and this gives us an opportunity to uh, to chat a little bit and um, I think that it, it was it was wonderful to be able to to pause uh, again this was the the last afternoon the last uh, bit of time that uh, that you had to be able to get out and explore. If I if memory serves, we we you know tracked down a really nice dinner and we had a, a nice last meal there. Um, as you needed to go home the next day, the ninth, and um, and I did some other explorations and everything. But uh, uh, this is where you sort of impart uh, just a little bit of wisdom. So uh, let's let's see what uh, Jordan of the past has to say here. I don't remember any of it, so yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I, we can always edit it out. <laughs> All right. Mr. Jordan Clark, we are riding our bicycles uh, from Leiden all the way to Delft. Yep. And uh, this is your final afternoon. Talk, talk a little bit about uh, your experience the, the past couple weeks. Well, it's been great. It's been eye opening. Um, I knew a little bit what to expect, but it's just one of the things that jumps out is how easy it is to get around you know within a city or a town that's that's it's very comfortable to get around on a bike but you can get between cities biking so easily the trains work great um the network of basically just non-car mobility is reliable enough for you to not have to second guess whether it's going to be possible to get from one city to the next which is awesome um, not to mention, it's usually a really beautiful route between cities. Yeah. So, case in point, yeah. we're uh, we're we're along this canal here. Uh, we've got a windmill, an actual windmill, yeah, blowing yeah. in a stiff wind. We're sort of hiding in a, a little uh, lee of the the wind with a, a tree break here. Uh -huh. Talk about this ride, man. Is this like a great way to cap it all this off? This is amazing. I think it's <laughs> like 
you can get your fill of urban bike rides and rural bike rides in the same afternoon or the same morning. Yeah. And we've done two different cities today. And now we're riding all the way back a few hundred meters from a highway, which you can hardly even tell. <laughs> yeah. The noise is not there. Yeah, I mean, check this out. How wide is this? Like 12 feet or something? Yeah. And it's considered good enough for two-way traffic and cycle traffic and it's just another piece of the all ages and abilities network. Um, I think we might say it's it's certainly felt comfortable on this route. Yeah. Talk a little bit about this because I, it, this is a great route to bring parallels back to North America and the you know that that thought process of oh yeah it's it's a cycle path but it's only recreational yeah. or whatever I mean this is a great example we've seen plenty of recreational cyclists yeah. out here but we've also seen just people getting home and it's using both, it for yeah. utilitarian purposes talk about that multi-use yeah. kind of concept here yeah well I think we're we're used to finding um, cycle paths or bike trails in the US as kind of a recreational assets and almost like oh if you've got one in your part of town like kind of checking off a box but I just think it's so important to um, or there's a lot of value in making a recreational feature also work for transportation yeah. we're obviously using this path to get back to where we're staying yeah that person was using it for for exercise and I, there's no reason it can't do both and we've talked to, to a few of our guides here about this kind of same topic of like if it's not adding a whole lot of extra time onto your route but it's a lot more pleasant and you're with trees and water like why wouldn't you why wouldn't you take this and have a like a refreshing commute to wherever you're going yeah, yeah. Right? our commutes take a lot out of us in the in the car oriented system yeah but this is energizing yeah <laughs> yeah so if you were to boil down the trip to, to like one thing uh, that uh, North Americans can take away, yeah. you know, from, you know, this experience, uh, what, what would you have people think about in terms of, you know, don't, don't assume this about the Dutch, it, 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 dot, dot, dot. Yeah, well, yeah, I think maybe one of the misconceptions is you have to be a, you know, an old European city or village to make a... I don't know, maybe that that's connected with making the cycling networks work, but we've seen brand new suburbs that are being built right now and thousand year old cities that have cycle networks that are working and in progress of getting better. And that's maybe the other thing is that they seem to not stop and get content with like, well, okay, we've put something down. They seem to really study it and see what's not working and how can we continuously make it better. Yeah. We saw a roundabout that went in only a few years after the previous roundabout design was put in because they thought they could make it better right. and safer. Uh, the other thing is I just I think about like a road like this and, and many of the streets in cities and how little pavement they actually use mm -hmm. to get people around because of making efficient use of space. So from a climate standpoint and, and climate adaptation standpoint and at being able to find room for green infrastructure um, and for different roadway users there's a lot of things to learn here that don't depend on well you know it's in their genes or whatever or or it's Europe it's, right there's nothing that makes me feel like I'm in a totally different world here other than they've just made some different decisions that started a little bit further back right Right. So, like, we get to see what it looks like when it's matured a little bit, which should be really exciting and not not depressing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It can yeah. be a little depressing to see the how far there is to go, but they had to start somewhere, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, it has been an absolute pleasure having yeah. you along uh, with me on this Active yeah, Towns tour, 2022 style and edition. And uh, uh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you. This couldn't have been a better trip. This is great. So, uh, yeah, there you go, man. I thought that was wonderful. You know, there were some real pearls of wisdom there from, from <laughs> my, my perspective. Well, what you don't know is all I could keep thinking about was over your shoulder was uh, goats, but more importantly, a robot lawnmower zigzagging <laughs> across the lawn. <laughs>
I had never seen one of those before. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was an advanced, uh, you know, farmer. They had goats and a robot lawnmower. That's a good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. But uh, li- listening to those words and 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 reflecting now, uh, we've been doing this for the last six months of pulling out all of these different videos and, and reflecting on them, uh, you know, starting with, uh, you know, the International Cargo Bike Festival uh, was our very first day and a very first couple you of days. You see my shirt here? Yeah, there, there's your shirt. Oh. Uh, yay, International <laughs> Cargo Bike Festival with the OS. And... Um, uh, and, and and of course, the very first video that we produced in this series was uh, was of course the the our, our ride day. through Har- Harlem. There, it was that yeah. same day. Uh, so it w- sort of got excited and took that out of um, out of order. Uh, <laughs> but in, in listening to those words and thinking about you know all of these videos that we have produced uh, over the last uh, six months, uh, any any additional comments or anything you'd like to edit from what you just said on screen there? Hmm. You know, surprisingly, I I think I hit a lot of the high points that I probably would, would revisit right now. I just would want to say that what we saw in the Netherlands was the product of decisions and um, not some inevitability tied to who they are as Europeans or Dutch people or whatever. You know, obviously we we have different histories, but they made decisions and policies and like kept making decisions that said, all right, um, movement doesn't have to require a car. Participation in society doesn't have to require a car. Uh, and we can make decisions that make that a reality. And it took them time, but they made decisions and they stuck to them and they reversed prior mistakes as far as that went. And it's not like it was easy or whatever. And um, and it's, again, we have our own context and our own problems that are probably like, in terms of the built environment, much more extreme than what they were dealing with because we've kept on with the same strategies and the same, uh, you know, car dominant ideology. But they were decisions and we have the capacity to make new decisions. And that's very, once again, as I said before, very inspiring that we have it within us to do this, these things. Yeah. So now that you've been back, uh, you've had that experience, that two week experience over there and you've been back and we've been going through these, these videos and this content, um, where are you at, you know, from, from like, a perspective of being excited and that, you know, that we can make these transformations within North America. What's a, you know, you know what sort of like is your personal sort of like sense as to uh, what needs to be done? And, and we, we know it can be done, um, but that doesn't mean that it's going to get done. Where are you at on that concept? You know, and are you, are you energized and want to, you know, want to get down and see this get, get happening? I mean, I know, part of your job is, is doing a little bit of this work. Uh, yeah. but you know, where are you at from like, from a, a spirit, you know, perspective, uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, do, do we have, do we have a chance or do we pull a Jason Slaughter and, and just pull up stakes and, and move to Amsterdam? <laughs> oh God. There's a few places that make me, ins- you know, inspired and I, and, and like seeing that, new possibilities are opening up, but I, I have to be honest that I am very disheartened a lot of the time by what I see in my immediate surroundings. And I know people in Dallas, for example, which is where I live, there are people who are really trying hard, but it's such an uphill battle against so many entrenched interests. And it's, it, it doesn't have to be depressing, but it really sometimes is depressing. Like we're not in large part, we're just not serious in so many cities in so many States like Texas, um, where the vast majority of transportation money gets spent on and has to get spent on further reducing automobile friction. It's very disheartening to, to see us almost like 
continuing to step on the accelerator. It would, that's how it feels, you know, uh, in the wrong direction. And I know this isn't a very great place to leave it on, but I I will have to admit that sometimes it would feel just easier to be like, I, my life's only so long. Um, and we all deserve places where we where not just the inside, you know, the indoor spaces where we are, but also the outdoor spaces are conducive to, you know, human life and human activity. Um, that's that that's that tension that I guess you that that you have to navigate when you find places like this that really do a good job of creating human scale places and then reconciling that with sometimes like places you call home not living up to that i i don't know it's it's a it's a day-to-day thing whether i feel really really disheartened and or really like gung-ho about making change you know yeah yeah and I think that's a human human nature perspective. I mean, you know, a, a good number of the folks that we connected with, uh, you know, there in the Netherlands, you know, made those decisions as well and, and uh, made the decision to move from North America to, uh, you know, to the Netherlands. And so, yeah. um, you know, th- that is a viable option for, for some people. And, uh, and, you know, if that's part of the dream, then that's great. Uh, on the other hand, you know, there are, as you mentioned, uh, encouraging, inspiring stories of of the battle being fought and being won in, you know, sometimes it's block by block and community by community in cities. I'm wearing a street films uh, shirt here. Uh, Clarence just got back from, you know, documenting what was going on in Portland and uh, and is continuing to document what's going on in the streets there in New York City. And so there are these glimmers of hope. We've uh, I've documented, you know, what's happening here in Austin. I've had that opportunity to take you around and do a bicycle tour of some of the infrastructure that's going on the ground here that is Dutch inspired in Austin. And that's, you know, an invitation to, to folks. If you're watching this, uh, you know, please, you know, let me know if you're in town, if I'm not here, I'll, I'll be able to at least point you in the direction of, of some of the great infrastructure that is happening in the state of Texas of all places of uh, Texas. in the heart of Texas. And, but it's, it, yeah, it's a fight. It's not easy. And, um, you know, one of the, the key things that uh, we as a society need to do is to realize that uh, as community members, we can get disheartened really, really easy and just kind of give up and say that there's no way to do this. But we do have a voice and we can share content like this and, uh, and, and, and you know, some of these other videos that we, you know, that we highlighted of the fact that, you know, this is possible. And again, you know, these places like Amsterdam, uh, you know, when we were out, you know, riding with, with Jason Slaughter and, and, and doing these, you know, wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful trips and getting out there and riding, uh, and exploring. One of the great things that I loved about, uh, the ride here with with Jason is that we spent a good mo- amount of that time, um, you know, riding through through Parkland, and it, he made it a point to 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 share that a lot of what we think of in terms of of wonderful places, um, you know, is just this: it's getting off of that that street. We talked a little bit about it there in Leiden, but getting, uh, you know, away from the motor vehicle traffic and leveraging the use of our parks and our green spaces and our waterways uh, to be able to be more than just recreation, to be utilitarian in addition to, to, you know, in in addition to that recreation aspect of it. Um, so I think there's, there is things that we can do. Um, I, I love this particular ride with, with Jason, you know, with not just bikes, because he, again, I didn't know what he was going to, where he was going to take us. You know, he just said, come on, let's go. And, And it ended up being, I think a loop through an industrial area. And we went through like five different parks because they were all integrated into the network. And I think that was a really, really interesting lesson. What, what other videos that we produced or cities that we did really resonated for you? Mm. 
Uh, well, I, I think I would say Brussels was one of those places because it reminded me a lot more of North America in some ways. And you can, you can see them starting to get there. It, they're, they're much closer to us in, in their relationship to the automobile. Yeah. And, uh, that there were some inspiring moments to see them making like big jumps. Oh, David Zipper had put an article out, right. right. Talking yeah. about, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know that's been getting some more attention lately. I don't know. I, I, I loved, I don't know that it's a specific video, but I, I like when we were able to show extremely urban places and rural places and how the infrastructure responds to the context. Yeah. That makes a big difference to me. I, I just want to add a, something. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say that seemed to be a common theme for many of the cities that we, you know, experienced was that, you know, we would be in the urban, you know, sort of area and then we turn the corner and the next thing you know, we're along a canal and, the, and we're out in the rural too. Yeah. And that's a feature of Dutch development. And they, they didn't mm -hmm. do the thing where they sort of endlessly sp sprawled out based on, based on car movement. And some of that's particular to just how much land there is or isn't, you know, yeah. available in the Netherlands. Um, yeah. But even in places that would be, that walking would be quite a um, stretch to get between places, mm -hmm. you know, bikes are able to fill that gap because it's comfortable and safe to do so. Right. And that's a, and that's a democratic type of, uh, uh, approach to society building, city building, right. suburb building, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I want to add one more thing. Sure. Um, sorry to cut you off, John. Um, it's just not really like the point of all this isn't to just browbeat and be like, trying to impose aesthetic preferences or say somehow Europe, you know, we should just be like Europe because of some sense that some like inferiority complex or whatever. Right. Uh, I think this is a discussion about respecting and upholding the dignity of human life. Mm -hmm. And so much of the, if we're just going to talk about the built environment, so many of the physical places we've built, really undermine that dignity of human life, right. the experience of human life. And I, I don't know that we have to make it anything like, I, I think if we can return to remembering that the point is like that life should be full and rich and safe and like, like vibrant, I think that we will arrive at some of these different infrastructure decisions. Um, and, and I, I, that should give us urgency to make the quickest possible changes that start getting us there with temporary, you know, cheap materials. Like it, this shouldn't be stuff we need to study and have a new plan and another study that calls for another plan. Like we need action immediately and we should get it. We don't have to get it all the way perfect. We can like make little steps very fast that make a broad difference. I, yeah. Period. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I mean, for sure. And, and part of that too, and we, we experienced this, I think in, um, in so many of the places that, that we visited is that when we are, you know, when we're out here, you know, on these, these streets and these roads and these cycle paths, um, we're also seeing that, um, all ages and abilities are being able to do this. And so this goes to your point about human dignity is like, is this, a, is this a situation where, um, everybody, regardless of their physical abilities, can they get around their town? It is so incredibly yeah. empowering when you see the, the very, very young and the very, very old and yeah. people with mobility issues still being able to experience their city. And too often, I think, our, our cycle networks and our pedestrian facilities, uh, we hear from a, a subset of the population saying, well, what about us? We're disabled. You're being ableist. We're like, well, oh, sorry, you, you misunderstood what we were saying. We're, we literally are saying all ages and all abilities. 
and yes. and saying that this should be, uh, you know, an environment where your entire city should be at your at your quote unquote fingertips yeah. without having to be in a motor vehicle. And I don't blame anybody for having that initial response because, like, look look at all the examples we have to point to, right? Like nearby. Well, yeah. that bike lane seems like super, like not safe. <laughs> like right. if we have just bad examples that would make you feel like you can't use it. Um, if you have a disability, if you're, um, an older person, um, obviously taking out that we've seen those little mobility motorized mobility, yeah. if, um, those tiny car looking things. Yeah. 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 Tiny I car, mean, yeah, like if, yeah. if we're just, if we're just seeing examples that are, like, seem scary and unsafe to use, then, then like, I can really understand seeing like what car, the car is the only place that I can get in and like sort of feel like I'm safe or whatever to get around. Yeah. 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 And, and we shouldn't, you know, to your previous point, um, these things, um, they can't just be in rich neighborhoods. Right. Like when we were talking about all people, it really does need to be like, uh, this can't be like projects we selectively undertake in places that we want the property values to go up or the places where right. the, the rich already live. Yeah. If we're really yeah. doing this for like human dignity on a, you know, universal scale. Yeah. And even this, this facility that we're on right now here in Nijmegen uh, that Yos is, is showing us, this ends up connecting uh, to a brand new community that is, is being developed, um, you know, yeah. 30, 30,000 new households, many of them apartments and, uh, you know, affordable housing options. And yet this particular facility helps connect to the, the old town uh, center in the downtown, the city center. Um, and then along the way, we also end up experiencing the connectivity to the schools. And so it becomes empowering uh, for, for, for the youngest in our society, which I, I can't you know, emphasize enough, yep. is that level of being able to empower your kids to be able to venture around their neighborhood, around their community, around their city, without having to be carted around by the parent in a motor vehicle, or even a cargo bike for that matter. They grow out yeah. of the cargo yeah, bike and right. be able to explore the city on their own. That free range kid aspect of it, we were joking about it earlier, with teens hanging out, I mean, it just makes me smile to see the the fact that they have that level of freedom and autonomy, um, yep. I think it helps pave the way, pardon the pun, to a brighter future for society in general when kids are able to develop that sense of independence. Yeah, and are like socialized in all these different ways growing up rather than learning to be an atomized individual, you know, just like in on your own, as a consumer, like, I think it's a different, a fundamentally different way of related to the, the world and your surroundings when you're able to, to like have this level of autonomy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good stuff. Jordan, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for, for joining me uh, again on the Active Towns Tour 2022 uh, style there in uh, in the Netherlands. I continued on for another week and so I'll be torturing the audience uh, with a few more videos. Uh, I do make my way over to Paris and so uh, there, there will be something on that. But uh, uh, it's been an absolute joy and honor being able to spend uh, some additional time with you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for your support of the Active Towns channel. is very much appreciated. I hope you know that. And uh, I can't wait to, uh, you know, be able to, you know, do more projects with you in the future. Yeah, same same here, John. Thanks for uh, including me in the trip and, and bringing me back for these chats. And uh, also a big thanks to all the people who showed us around who are too many to name, um, but met some pretty awesome people over there so all right and and thanks for tuning in everybody <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. Hey, thank you very much, everyone, for, for watching this. And if you enjoyed it, or you know the drill, right? <laughs> Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And yes, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the Active Towns channel. And if you are able to help support the channel, please consider becoming a an Active Towns ambassador on the, on the Patreon. Uh, one of the benefits of being Patreon is you get access to all this stuff commercial free and early. It's well worth it. Uh, I, especially since these tend to be longer. It's, you know, you, you do you get that all ad free. That's good stuff. It's well worth a <laughs> buck or two or, or more uh, per month. Yeah. Uh, and again, once again, Jordan, thank you so very much. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Town store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm.